A brief introduction to costly signaling. Let's start by looking at a few puzzling situations. Why do we give value to authentic art, but give little value to similar high-quality reproductions? When Will You Marry, a famous piece from the French post-impressionist artist Paul Gauguin sold for $300 million in 2015. Why? Why do we give so much value to original art? Would we pay $300 million for an accurate reproduction of this art? No. Then it can't just be about the physical attributes of the art. Here's another puzzle. Why did Europeans develop complex etiquette rules? Check out this diagram of a dinner place. It's so complicated. Who cares which spoon or cup you'll use for what? Why would anybody bother learning all these rules? Here's a third puzzle. Why do peacocks have ridiculous tails when these tails don't help them fly, and instead make it more likely that they'll catch diseases or be eaten by predators? Think about it. It is very costly, in terms of energy, for a peacock to grow a tail. What is this peacock trying to signal? In order to answer these questions, we can use the costly signaling model. The costly signaling model has three parts. We'll start by explaining the model using peacocks and peahens, and then come back to explaining our puzzles and humans. Player one represents the peacock. This peacock could be either a high type or fit peacock, or a low type or unfit peacock. Player 2 represents the peahen. Player 2 doesn't know player 1's type. The peahen can't tell if the peacock is a high type or a low type. She can't tell if he is physically fit. Although the peacock can't tell the peahen his type, he does have the opportunity to send the signal, which, for a peacock, just means growing a long, beautiful tail. For everyone, the cost of sending signal S sub n is less than the cost of sending signal S sub n plus 1. But for low types, this cost is much greater. Now player 2 can see player 1's signal. The peahen can see the peacock's tail. Finally, player 2 can decide whether or not she would like to accept or reject. In the case of the peahen, she decides whether or not she would like to mate with player one. As you can see, the high type or fit peacock has an easier time sending a costly signal, and as a result has a positive payoff when he matches. An unfit peacock would not put energy into the growth of his tail, as the cost of doing so outweighs the benefit of matching. This is what is called a Nash Equilibrium in game theory. In this game, it is a Nash Equilibrium for the high types to send signal S2, low types to send no signal at all, and peahens only to accept peacocks that have sent a signal of S2 or greater. Each player is doing as best as he can. For example, the low type senders can't do better by sending the signal because it's just too expensive. It's too costly for them. After seeing how the model explains peacock's long tails, we can talk about humans again. What is the purpose of buying an original piece of art? Why spend $300 million on it when you can get a perfect replica for much less? That's what 3D printers are for. Isn't it a costly signal? A high type shows his wealth to receivers by buying unique art. A receiver might not know that person's bank balance but the signal gives them a good idea of their type. Now we can see the costly signaling model in action. It is a Nash equilibrium to signal one's type by buying original, expensive art. But since low types could afford a replica, it's not an equilibrium to buy cheap replicas. 
What about all of these unnecessary dishes? Well, in order to tackle this one, we have to look at the origins of European etiquette. One wouldn't know how to use all of these forks and knives and in what order unless they grew up in a royal or rich household. Isn't this also a costly signal? A high type would show he was raised in wealth to receivers by knowing etiquette rules. A receiver might not know the player's type, but if the sender knows these rules, the receiver can have a pretty good idea of their type. Here we can see the costly signaling model in action once again. Low types don't know table etiquette, and as a result, don't send a signal. High types know the laws of table etiquette and send the costly signal. Player 2 can then decide to accept or reject. What about other modern phenomena? What about sensation seeking? Why do we ride motorcycles? Riding a motorcycle is risky for everyone, but it is even riskier for those who are uncoordinated. High types show their coordination by riding motorcycles. What about the distinction in between white-collar and blue-collar jobs? Well, white shirts were costly to keep clean. Poorer people couldn't wear white shirts while doing labor. Only those who were wealthy could afford to clean white shirts. And as a result, white shirts are a costly signal. What about your weekend plans? It's very rare to talk to a college student about their Friday night without hearing about how much they had to drink. Why do we drink so much? It's costly to get drunk. It's expensive, it's dangerous, and it's unpleasant. But it is even more costly for those who are unfit. For example, the big football player in the bar could probably take 10 shots and live to tell the tale while the small dancer next to him would probably get alcohol poisoning. Big dudes can show their fitness by poisoning themselves, and as a result, binge drinking is a costly signal. Thank you for listening, and I hope that this introduction to costly signaling will help you look at the world in a slightly different way.